All right, and welcome to lecture 2.3 in our summer series on cognition. We're going to be moving forward and talking a little bit about applications of perception. This is an area often talked about uh, as being part of what we call human factors. And what we're going to be talking about first off are some limitations of perception. And in fact, we'll talk about how uh, sensation and perception aren't always the aren't really the exact same thing, because what we perceive is not always an accurate representation of the world. And then we're going to talk about some different ways in which we can look at uh, applications of this phenomenon, um, in which we see things like look but failed to see accidents, and other issues uh, in which our perceptual uh, systems are failing us by providing us with inaccurate information. And sometimes that's related to our own experiences. So let's start by talking about how perception is not the same as sensation. <coughs> and some of the easiest ways to demonstrate that what you see is not an accurate representation of the world are in illusions. So this is a classic example called the Herman grid. And so if you focus on one of the intersections, you can see it, it's white. But if you're not focusing on uh, an intersection or one of the ones you're not looking at, you can see um, shading right at those intersections. This illusion is created um, by neural processes um, that have to do with um, receptive fields. and The details of that aren't particularly important for this particular course, but it does demonstrate that we're seeing something that's not there. And that's a really important part of understanding that what we're seeing is not 100% uh, accurate. Classic um, culturally based illusion is called the Mueller liar illusion. And for most people, the line on the right looks longer than the line on the left, when in fact they're the exact same length. This is a culturally based illusion, and it is primarily um, it, pr it primarily occurs uh, in people from Western cultures, and there's a lot of cultural uh, research done in this area. So our experiences are what directly lead to this particular illusion, and essentially it has to do with the kinds of architecture we grow up around, and our expectations about size and distance, and what those angles tell us about that kind of distance. The Ponzo illusion is another example uh, based on our experiences and based on our understanding of depth and um, linear perspective and size and distance. So these two lines you see in front of you are the exact same length. They look of different lengths because that's what our uh, experience tells us, that in order for them to appear the same size on our retina, the same visual angle as we call it, um, the one must be much bigger because it appears to be further away. Uh, this is an example of the Ponzo illusion that I created. Uh, so you can see here the uh, yellow line on the right looks much longer than the one on the left, and I can immediately take away that illusion. What's remarkable about this particular illusion is you can reinstate it just as easily. And so instantly that illusion comes back, where one looks to be uh, longer than the other, when in fact we know that's not the case. There are a number of different variants of the Ponzo illusion. It's another one, uh, another couple of classics. The one on the right's my favorite, the bigger monster chasing the littler monster. But if we take the monsters out of their tunnel, put them next to each other, we see that they're actually the same size. Finally, this is one of my favorite applications. As part of the um, war against terror in the Middle East, uh, we've been in Iraq quite a bit, and there's a great deal of lore about Iraqi camel spiders. And this particular picture is the one that uh, gets people particularly riled up. Uh, this looks like a spider that is the size of um, a small dog. <laughs> in fact, it looks bigger than a dinner plate. In fact, these are about the same size as the tarantula, which is still a pretty big spider, don't get me wrong, and I don't want one. Um, and this, you can go on YouTube and see videos of soldiers being chased out of their barracks by them. Uh, but this particular size illusion has to do with the linear perspective and what our expectations are about size and distance. 
So all of these illusions provide clear examples that perception is sensation in the context of our experience, whereas sensation is the product of our sensory information. And so while sen perception arises from sensation, it is not a direct representation of our sensations. In fact, what we get from our perception has much more to do uh, with our experiences, our neural structures, our expectations. All of these things um, have a great deal to do with how we perceive size and distance. Well, this becomes particularly important out in uh, the real world, and particularly in things like driving. So there is a common phenomenon called look but fail to see accidents. And so we call this area human factors or human performance because we're talking about how people interact with their environment and particularly with the technology they're using and in this case we're talking about automobiles. So a common factor in automobile accidents is failure to see an object even though you're looking right at it. And we're going to revisit some of this when we get to attention. So some of this has to do with attention and some with visual perception. But most of these accidents are due to relying on our experience rather than the sensations or perceptions in front of us. And one of the most um, interesting and um, tragic of these has to do with uh, automobiles stopped on the side of the road. So uh, in this particular experiment, um, they had uh, police vehicles stop in line with the traffic or in what's called an echelon position. Um, and this echelon position is actually how police officers in the United States are generally trained to stop. If you've ever wondered why police officers stop behind you like this, it's because of this particular phenomenon. So what's happening in uh, these accidents is um, as someone's traveling up the road, this research was done in the UK, which is why this car is traveling in that direction <laughs> on the other side of the road. Um, what happens is, as uh, you're traveling down the road and you see a police car stopped, or you see a police car in this particular inline formation, it's difficult to tell whether or not that car is stopped or moving. Whereas in the echelon position, we know the car's not moving because cars don't travel sideways down the street. And so this helps uh, us know that this car is stopped. And what Langham et al. found is that participants were shown this video uh, and asked to identify hazards. The interesting part about this is inexperienced drivers identified both types of hazard, the inline and the echelon, at the same speed whereas experienced drivers took longer to identify the inline hazard because the experienced drivers expected this car to be moving um, whereas inexperienced drivers have not developed any expectations about um, cars moving and in what direction they're moving and so they are much more likely to identify this car uh, as stopped so it shows that our experiences are a strong source of perception it also shows us some really important ways in which cognitive psychology and cognition in particular has important applications out in, um, out in the real world and in particular out in uh, applied contexts like this. So this kind of research saves lives. And so there's a lot of really important work being done on how our perceptions can lead to things like accidents. So rather than blaming uh, drivers as being inattentive, which of course sometimes they are and we'll talk about that when we get to attention, Understanding how to fix this is really the important thing rather than fixing blame. And so this is some really important kinds of research. So other um, uh, incidences or examples of um, applied perception, uh, there are a number of these, but friendly fire incidents are one of them. Oftentimes this is a uh, due to a combination of events uh, where um, information is misperceived and you perceive a threat when in actuality it's a friend instead of a foe. Uh, this is also how people get shot um, in high stress events. We'll talk about the role of stress in um, perception later on, in particular stress in working memory. Uh, but we'll see that people under stress respond very differently. Uh, they react very quickly. Their perceptions change very quickly. They're much more likely to perceive threats if they're in high stress situations. So to give you an example, um, at the end of a police chase, uh, a high speed uh, automobile chase, uh, police officers are in a fight or flight mode. 
And so what happens is they perceive threats much more quickly uh, than they might in other instances. And this is one of the reasons why uh, there are so many uh, incidents that occur at the end of police chases. Um, now, I'm not trying to argue that someone should be shot because they ran from the police, and I understand there's reasons why people don't trust the police and they run from them. But it's important to understand um, that at that instance, the officer is not perceiving things in the same way they might have in another instance. And so these are really important things for us to think about to try to get a handle on these issues and try to figure out a way to fix them. So this is a quick introduction to some of the issues involved in um, how visual perception uh, in particular can lead to um, unfortunate incidents. So we're going to turn in our next lecture and talk a little bit about auditory information and auditory perception and just talk about a couple of issues. We won't spend a great deal of time there, but uh, we'll wrap up our discussion of perception uh, by looking at that.